Welcome. By now, you've probably heard about the officer who took the pictures of Tyree Nichols and then shared those pictures. Well, in this video, we're going to be talking about how that officer was placed on leave, how that officer was then terminated, the charges, the administrative charges that were brought forth, and then the actual statement of particulars that lays out what happened with those pictures and generally what happened at night. Yeah. We are going to start with the change of status. This is the Tennessee Peace Officer Standards and Training Commission. This is for Demetrius Haley. We're going to scroll down here where it talks about what happened in the beginning. January 8, 2023 was when the officer was placed on administrative leave. You'll see down here at the bottom, it says officer relieved of duty effective January 8, 2023. And you can see by, that this was signed by the head of the Memphis Police Department. Then we had the change of status for Demetrius Haley. And it says here, this is to notify the post commission that the named officer is no longer employed by this department as indicated below terminated january 20th 2023 so now you have an idea of when he was placed on leave when the termination was now let's look at this decertification request this is actually recently this is pretty new like we've known that there was a leave we've known that there was a termination but this is the first we're hearing of this decertification and actually taking a look at it because this is where the statement of particulars goes through everything that they're saying that he did wrong this is the peace officer standards and training commission decertification request for demetrius haley and we're going to scroll down here to the one that is boxed Three, suspended or discharged 30 days or longer, resign in lieu of termination, resign with disciplinary action pending that could have resulted in termination, or discharged by his or her employing law enforcement agency for disciplinary reasons. Well, we just saw the termination. And again, signed by um, the agency head, and there is the date there. Now, let's go through the statement of charges here. And you see here what his rank was. He was actually police officer two. He was assigned to OCU, the Scorpion unit that we've heard so much about. The date of this is January 14th, 2023. And it says here, notice is hereby given that you are being charged with violations of policy law or regulations as shown below. Personal conduct, termination, truthfulness, termination, neglect of duty, termination, excessive force, unnecessary force, termination. Compliance with regulations to wit, this has to do with the body worn camera, 40 day swap, information concerning police business, 40 day swap also. Date of occurrence, January 7th, 2023 was when this happened. Okay, so now let's get into this statement of particulars so we can read through this and understand exactly what happened. On January 7th, 2023, you and your partners initiated a traffic stop at East Rains and Ross Road, where your partner alerted you of a reckless driver who died at the hospital three days later following a use of force incident. You exited your unmarked vehicle, stopped in an imposing in an opposing traffic lane, and you forced the driver out of his vehicle while using loud profanity and wearing a black sweatshirt hoodie over your head. You never told the driver the purpose of the vehicle stop or that he was under arrest. Audio from a body worn camera did not capture the driver using profanity or displaying any violent threats. You also were on an active cell phone call where the person overheard the police encounter. After the subject was placed in custody at Castlegate Lane and Bear Creek Cove, you and other officers were captured on the body worn camera, making multiple unprofessional comments such as that MF made me spray myself, laughing and bragging about your involvement. Your conversation and lack of concern for the injured subject was witnessed by a civilian who took photographs and cell phone video. The civilian's viewpoint was you and your partners left the injured subject lying on the ground, handcuffed, and unattended. The report of the victim's death was broadcasted on both local and national media sites. The release of any digital evidence 
of you and your partner's actions will shed a bad light on the department and city of Durham. Your on-duty conduct was unjustly, blatantly unprofessional and unbecoming for a sworn public servant. Your actions place you in violation of DR 104 personal conduct, which states. Now, before I get into that, let me just backtrack for a second, because this is the first time that I have actually had them talk about this witness. Maybe I missed the news on that, but this is the first time I've actually heard them talk about this witness who actually saw some of what happened and then also captured some of this on the witness cell phone. I had never heard that before. This is something entirely new to come to this case because once you have criminal actions here, this witness is now possibly going to testify and, and talk about what this person saw and possibly what is on that cell phone. So personal conduct, and this is the department's policy here that, that is being um, saying that he didn't follow. So it says, you're required to complete a response to resistance form to provide a truthful account of your use of force during your encounter with a suspect. In your incident summary, you wrote that you heard your partner tell the individual, let my gun go before he was taken to the ground. You were also heard making the same statement on body-worn camera to your partners in the presence of witness officers. However, video evidence did not support your oral or written statement and your information was deemed untruthful. As a result, two of your other partners also reported an incorrect statement. During your Garrity statement, you were afforded the opportunity to review your use of force narrative and told ISB investigators that the details were correct. You failed to disclose. You also kicked the subject while he was on the ground. Your actions place you in violation of DR 108 truthfulness with states. And you can see that there. Then it says during your first and second encounter with the subject, you sprayed him up close directly in his eyes and then kicked him while he was on the ground. You failed to recognize the victim's signs of distress and failed to disclose viable information to the responding emergency personnel to render the proper medical attention. According to body-worn camera footage, you knew the subject was pepper sprayed, tased, struck with an ASP baton, and kicked. You and your partners also failed to immediately assist the emergency medical personnel with the request to unhandcuff the subject as his condition changed while left unattended on the ground. Your actions place you in violation of DR 120, neglect of duty, which states, and so there you have the policy on neglect of duty. Then it says, you were the first contact officer on the traffic stop at which time you physically forced the driver from the vehicle and deployed your chemical irritant spray directly up close to the subject's eyes. He ran from you and two of your partners and was later apprehended and was later apprehended, I think they've been by other members of your unit at Castlegate Lane and Bear Creek Cove within six minutes. As three of your partners were attempting to handcuff him, you ran up and kicked the individual in the upper torso area. In your Garrity statement, your reason was to loosen the subject's arm who, all, who appeared to already be held onto by his arms. Your physical force during the second encounter was not reasonable. Your actions placed you in violation of DR 301, excessive force, unnecessary force, which states. Let me stop here for a second because this piece about him running up and kicking him and then this next piece sounds it sounds to me like something totally made up and it says it says you ran up and kicked the individual in the upper torso area and your reason the reason that he gave for this was it was to loosen the subject's arm which appeared to already be held onto by his arm. Like it doesn't even make any sense. I can't even understand what you're saying. So you kick somebody to loosen something up. I, surely that is not what you have been taught that I, I can't imagine that that was policy within the department, that that is something you, you do that. I, I can't even believe that you tried to use that, that that was never going to work, but let me go back and, and let's see what you said next happened after that, or at least what's next 
in this document. All right, let's scroll down. Excessive force, unnecessary force. And here you have the policy here. You failed to activate. And, and well, let me talk about this, this paragraph before, actually. Officers shall never use force or violence that is unprovoked, needless, or not required during performance of their duties when making an arrest or in dealing with a prisoner or any person. So you're run up to the person and kicking him? Uh, okay, yeah. Totally unprovoked, needless, and not required. You failed to activate your body-worn camera during the first encounter with the involved citizen on the traffic stop. Your body-worn camera was functioning properly and did not record the use of force incident in its entirety. Your actions place you in violation of DR 101 compliance with regulations to it, BWC that, uh, slash ICV, which states, and here is the actual policy for using the body-worn camera. Now, I'm not going to read this whole policy here, but we know that this policy exists. In addition, here is other information, OCU procedures that are supposed to be followed. We've got a number of uh, procedures there. Let's now go to officers working in an undercover capacity will not utilize the BWC. Okay, on your cell phone. Now, this is the part that we want to get to because this is that new piece that we've been hearing so much about. On your personal cell phone, you took two photographs while standing in front of the obviously injured subject after he was handcuffed. In your Garrity statement, you admitted you shared the photo in a text message with five people, one civilian employee, two MPD officers, and one female acquaintance. During the administrative investigation, a sixth person was identified as a recipient of the same photograph. Your actions place you in violation of DR 601 information concerning police business. And it says here, a member shall not communicate information relating to official police matters without prior approval or subpoena, except as authorized persons. A member shall treat the official business of the department as confidential. Now, we get that there's a policy for that. We understand that there's a need to make sure that information is kept confidential. But this feels callous and disrespectful. It's beyond not being necessary, but it just violates every idea that we have about humanity and how you treat another person. Here, this person has been subject to a beating. They've run after him and chased him. They've sprayed him, tased him. And the thing that you think is best to do is to take pictures and then share those pictures with someone else. Now, I might could understand if you were sharing them with members of the police department for official police business. So for instance, a sergeant or someone came up and said, hey, can you go ahead and send that over? Maybe there's something in that that they need for official police purposes. But here's the problem. This wasn't for official police purposes. This wasn't in compliance with their policies. And if I read that correctly, this was your personal cell phone. And not only did you just not just send it to Memphis police officers, but you sent it to people who should not have been receiving it in any way whatsoever. Outside acquaintance, a female acquaintance? No, that should not have happened. And so that's what you see here in the report. Then you have the signature here where he is saying that he received a copy of that. Next thing that we have up is the administrative summons. And again, this goes through the actual charges that you saw listed below or the rules or violations, personal conduct, truthfulness, neglect of duty, excessive or unnecessary force, compliance with regulations regarding the body worn camera, and then that release of confidential information. It says you used excessive force to apprehend a nonviolent subject. Keep that in mind, nonviolent subject following a traffic stop 
where the person sustained critical injuries and later expired. Your on-duty conduct was unbecoming and you neglected your duty to render aid and provide viable details to the emergency medical personnel. You failed to record the event in its entirety on your body-worn camera, later shared an unauthorized photo of the injured subject while in police custody, and you provided an untruthful report and oral statement. This was the date of the hearing. He was told that he was entitled to representation. It says your attendance at the hearing noticed herein is required unless excused due to a medical emergency. Failure to attend will not be construed by the hearing officer as a waiver of your right to be heard. I'm sorry, will be construed by the hearing officer as a waiver of your right to be heard. Attendance will be excused due to a medical emergency in the sole discretion of the hearing officer. And only if you have de have delivered or caused to be delivered to the hearing officer prior to the hearing data written statement regarding your medical condition. Then we have the hearing summary form. This is everything I'm telling you. This is everything about this. These are all of the details here. So we have uh, the statement here and again the actions that are ordered. So it says for personal conducts sustained and termination is ordered. Truthfulness sustained and termination is ordered. Neglect of duty, sustained and termination is ordered. Excessive, excessive force or unnecessary force, sustained and termination is ordered. Compliance with regulations, and this is a body worn camera, sustained and a 40 day suspension is ordered. Information concerning police business, sustained and a 40 day um, suspension is ordered. So there you have, and then they go through some of his um, rights here. Appeal, it says will not. Grievance, it says will. I understand, whoops, I, I understand that by requesting the grievance procedure that I'm waiving my right to recourse through the internal or civil service commission appeal process. All right, so let's go through the statement of the hearing officer for this hearing. Um, all right, and I'm going to go down here to this part. The charges stem from a complaint regarding allegations that on January 7, 2023, you and your partners initiated a traffic stop at E. Rains and Ross Road, where your partner alerted you of a reckless driver who died at the hospital three days later following a use of force incident. You exited your unmarked, ve unmarked vehicle, stopped in an imposing traffic lane, and you forced the driver out of his vehicle while using loud profanity and wearing a black sweaty hood hoodie over your head. So this is pretty much the same... Um, the same details that were listed in the statement of particulars. You never told the driver the purpose of the stop. The audio from the body worn camera did not capture the driver using profanity or displaying any threats. There's the information here about the comment that you made, the lack of concern for the injured subject, and then again, the civilian who took photographs and cell phone video. All of that information is there. And this is, again, okay, so now that we have the opening, personal conduct, the truthfulness piece, the neglect of duty, the excessive or unnecessary force, the compliance with regulations. Again, these are the policies that he was supposed to follow that he failed to follow. Information concerning police business. Down here at the bottom, it says, uh, let's get to this part of the hearing. At the beginning of the administrative hearing, Lieutenant Cage Rosario informed the hearing officer that Officer Haley would like to waive his rights to have each charge read in detail. During the administrative hearing on January 20th, 2023, Officer Demetrius Haley was informed by the hearing officer that he has now afforded the opportunity to make a statement. Officer Haley responded, no, sir, indicating that he did not wish to make a statement. Hearing officer asked Officer Haley, did he give TBI a statement? Officer Haley responded, no, sir. Hearing officer asked Officer Haley, did he give TBI a written statement? Officer Haley responded, no, sir. Now, there are some reasons why he may not want to give a statement, because this information could be used against him in other proceedings. For instance, a murder proceeding for second degree murder. Lieutenant Cage Rosario, the MPA representative, was asked if she would like to make a statement. Lieutenant Cage Rosario read a written statement, which will be included in the administrative file to whom it may concern. The Memphis Police Association objects 
to the Memphis Police Department's decision to proceed with the administrative hearing for Officer Demetrius Haley prior to the conclusion of the administrative investigation and or TBI's investigation. Per Article 14, and this is the Memorandum of Understanding between the MPA and the COM, the City of Memphis, um, assuming that's what that is, a reasonable amount of time to review the statement of charges, including all proof to be relied on upon by the hearing officer, is to be given to the representative prior to the administrative hearing. Upon review, several pieces of proof were either omitted from the file or incomplete at this time. Body-worn camera video, which was referred, which was referenced multiple times in the statement of charges, was not provided to the MPA representative, nor were statements from other principal or witness officers. These are only a few examples of the gross violations of this officer's right to due process. Not only is this a right under the MOU, but it is a right guaranteed by federal law. See Cleveland Board of Education versus Loudermill, where the court provided that a public employee with a property right in his or her employment must be provided notice of charges against them and a hearing to provide them with an opportunity to defend themselves against the charges against them. Wow, that's going back to my law school days there. Um, this will serve as the MPA's statement for this administrative hearing. And then um, there's the outcome. So here is the conclusion. The hearing officer carefully reviewed all documents relating to each alleged violation of the listed DRs by Officer Haley, including the Garrity statements and all the charged officers and response to resistance forms. The Garrity statements made by you and other charged officers are not consistent with each other and are not consistent with the publicly known injuries and death of Mr. Nichols. So they're saying this is just not matching up. And so then they go to, through the rules of professional conduct. They talk about um, the charges sustained and terminated. They go through each one of these. Truthfulness, the charge is sustained and termination is ordered. For neglect of duty, the same thing. Excessive force and unnecessary force, the charge is sustained and termination is ordered. And then you have the compliance of regulations here. The charge is sustained and that 40 day suspension is, is ordered. So those are all of the uh, particulars around that. Now I want to get to this letter from the Memphis Police Association where you have Cage Rosario, who is the president, who I just read some of that from. This is what the Memphis Police Association is saying, okay? They're basically saying, you know, you haven't given him his due process. But let's read this and see exactly what it says. The Memphis Police Association, MPA, objects to the Memphis Police Department's decision to proceed with the administrative hearing for office Demetrius Daly, prior to the conclusion of the administrative investigation and or TBI's investigation. So basically they're saying you're moving too fast already. You're trying to proceed and you haven't even waited for these other investigations to conclude. It says per Article 14, a reasonable amount of time to review the statement of charges is to be given to the representative in prior to the administrative hearing. And this is as I just read you before, they were saying this proof was admitted from the file the body-worn camera not provided, statements not provided, and they actually said that these amounted to gross violations and violated federal law. And this was the letter that was added there. So that is, uh, I think this is the last piece here, the memorandum here and termination was ordered. I believe that's it. So yeah, that's it for Demetrius Haley. So now you have this full understanding of when he was placed on leave, when he was terminated, and then the statement of particulars, the administrative hearing that took place, the officer's report on that. And then you also get this letter from the Memphis Police Association that says, hey, look, we think you violated his rights because we didn't get all the information. You didn't wait to the, until the other investigations were completed and you violated his federal due process rights. And that's what they're claiming. It'll be interesting to see how that piece goes. But back to the whole thing about the camera, about him taking these pictures and sharing them with other people. Can you imagine what it must be like for Mr. Nichols' family to know that not only did you assist 
in the killing of their son, their family member, but you were callous in your treatment of him, even when he sat there and had been beaten and was hurt. Callous and so disrespectful that you took pictures and then shared those pictures with other people. We have gotten so used to taking pictures of things that happen around us that we don't always stop to think whether or not we should. I take pictures all the time. I take video all the time. I even share things here and I've had people comment sometimes and say, oh, you forgot to blur out that person's address. And that's me not catching things sometimes. But we are so driven by trying to be the person who can share something, the person who can show their life that we don't even stop to think anymore because now it's second nature. And he put aside this person's rights as, as a person, Mr. Nichols' rights as a person, just so he could share photos or somebody else. Who does that? But to be honest, that is where our society is now. We callously treat other people without respect all the time. So let's take some time and think about what's wrong with this whole picture that we have a society that's sort of set up now, but they had policies in place and he violated quite a few of them. Whether or not anything happens with this due process violation that the MPA is talking about, we'll see if that goes anywhere. But I hope this brings you up to speed and you have more information now of what happened with him being um, terminated, with the charges, with the hearing, and then this information about the cell phone pictures that were shared. Don't forget to like the video and peace. Mwah.